Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Sudan's military arrests Prime Minister Abdullah Handok and dissolves transitional government. Health of jailed Indian activist Gautam Nawalkar worsens in high security barrack. Guatemalan forces suppress indigenous led protest against mining in El Astor. Israel to build another 1,300 illegal settlement structures in the occupied West Bank. In our first story, people took to the streets of Sudan in large numbers on October 25th in rejection of the military coup. Protests broke out following reports that several civilian leaders, including the Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok, had been arrested. Hamdok was reportedly taken to an undisclosed location after refusing to support a coup. As protests spread in Khartoum, Gunfire was reported and at least 12 people were injured. Military Chief General Abdul Fateh Al Buran has dissolved the transitional government and the sovereignty council. He also declared a nationwide state of emergency. Soldiers have blocked most roads and bridges leading to Khartoum. Telecommunication and internet services have also been disrupted. Soldiers also stormed the state radio and television headquarters in the city of Omdurman. Meanwhile, images on social media show protesters blocking roads and highways across the country. Sudan's Sovereignty Council was set up as a joint civilian military body after the 2019 revolution. It was supposed to serve as a transitional authority until the elections in 2023. However, over the past few weeks, tensions within the council had become increasingly apparent. A coup attempt by a faction of the military was also thwarted in September. Moreover, General Buran told his officers on October 11th that dissolving the transitional government was necessary. Over the past few weeks, millions of people have held protests to defend the revolution. The Sudanese Communist Party, trade unions and resistance committees have now declared a political strike and full civil disobedience. The Sudanese Professionals Association has also called on people to occupy the streets and block all roads. In our next story, concerns have grown around the worsening condition of jailed Indian activist Gautam Nawalkar. The 70-year-old journalist was arrested in August 2018 in relation to the Elgar Parishad Bhima Koregao case. It refers to extremist caste-based violence that took place in the state of Maharashtra in January 2018. However, police later claimed that the violence had been instigated by progressive activists. 16 people were detained in a months-long arrest campaign. They were accused of terror-related activities and of links to the banned Communist Party of India, Maoist. Navlakka has been imprisoned without trial at the Taloja jail in the city of Mumbai. On October 12th, he was shifted to a high-security barrack. His partner and activist Sabah Hussain has stated that his health has worsened since then. Navlakka has been confined to his cell for 16 hours a day. He has also been denied daily walks in the jail's non-concrete greener areas. This has made specialized medical care an absolute necessity. Hussain has also stated that Nawalakha has been denied phone calls to his lawyers and family members. In November 2020, Nawalakha's spectacles had gone missing. While Hussain had sent him a new pair, the jail authorities refused to accept the package. There have been numerous reports of activists arrested in the Elgar Parishad case being denied basic necessities. Outrage grew across India following the death of 84-year-old Father Stan Swami in July. His health had deteriorated severely and he died in custody awaiting bail in medical grounds. A state of emergency has been imposed in the El Astor municipality in Guatemala. The action followed days of police repression of an indigenous-led protest in the area. The Mayan K. Ekchi communities have been opposing the Compania Guatemalteca Nikel or the CGN. The mining company is a subsidiary of the Swiss Solway Investment Group. In June 2020, the Constitutional Court had suspended CGN's operation. This was based on a complaint by indigenous peoples who stated that they were not consulted about the mining in their area. The government also failed to comply with an environmental impact study. The court ruled that a referendum on the mining operations must be conducted. Meanwhile, despite the ban, CGN operations continued in the area. Human rights ombudsman Jordan Rodas also stated that the government was guarding CGN trucks. 
Starting October 4th, residents of El Estor organized a blockade to prevent the passage of coal-carrying trucks from the Phoenix mine. However, thousands of police and soldiers descended on the area on October 22nd. They opened fire and threw tear gas canisters, injuring several protesters. The state of emergency will now give police expanded powers to arrest people without a warrant and restrict protest. In our final story, Israel has announced the construction of an additional 1,355 houses in the occupied West Bank. These will be built across seven illegal settlements in the territory. The government had already authorized over 2,000 houses for settlers in August. It also expected to discuss proposals for another 3,000 structures next week. Around 475,000 Israeli settlers currently occupy and live in West Bank. This is a clear violation of international law. Meanwhile, there has been a marked increase in the demolition of Palestinian homes in the occupied West Bank. The first eight months of 2021 witnessed a 38% increase in the number of structures demolished or seized. According to United Nations data, 57% more people were displaced this year. All the Palestinian structures were targeted due to lack of building permits. However, these permits are widely known to be impossible to obtain in Area C of West Bank and occupied Jerusalem. Settler attacks have also grown since the start of the olive harvest season on October 12th. Over 1,400 trees have been destroyed and dozens of Palestinian farmers and villagers have been injured. That's all we have for today's episode. Please visit our website on www.peoplesdispatch.org and also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Thank you.